Stephen Hoad and welcome to the Stop Hunters Guide to Technical Analysis. This week we're going to have a look at an introduction to one of my favourite um, parts of technical analysis and that's Japanese charts. We've already seen a little bit about some of the peculiarities of the Japanese way of doing technical analysis when we looked at Ichimoku a few weeks back. But this week we're going to focus in on some very particular chart types that I use quite a lot in my trading. So as it says down there, four concepts uh, this week, uh, Heikinashi, Renko, Kagi, and Line Break. Heikinashi, what is Heikinashi? So uh, the easiest way, or easiest way of putting, I suppose, your heads on how to use this is it, it's to stop people with itchy trade fingers coming out of trends and trades too quickly. And I, even I use this to stay in trades longer. It's nothing magical, as we will see, it's quite simple, but it's, as it says, it's a strong psychological trading tool and very useful for those new to, to trading. Yeah, I suppose another real plus point of hiking Ashi trading is when we looked at candlestick charts the other week, there was thousands of different um, candlestick patterns and combinations that you could have. If you use hiking Ashi, then really you only need to learn a few key ones to start translating what you see before, which I also like the idea of because it helps speed up your analysis quite a lot. What does it do? What's the secret of Heiken Ashi? It basically just smooths out our traditional candlestick chart. It's taking out the noise and the volatility that impacts our decision making and just gives you, I think, a very clear presentation of the trend, uh, whether it's up or down or sideways, that just makes your decision making a lot easier. And all Heiken uh, candles are just a derivative of the candlestick chart. And what does it mean, Heiken if we translate that back from Japanese, it means average bar. And in its calculation, it's just looking at the two, two bars together, taking open, high, low and close and smoothing that out. I put the maths in here if you're really interested, but we'll have a quick look in a minute. But First of all, advantages of Heiken Ashi charting. To summarize, it takes out a lot of the psychology and noise for charts. When we cut out of trades too early, we often sit there and get angry with ourselves that we've come out too early. Hopefully this method would stop that. We also try and force the trade to conclusion. And again, we let it run more naturally. What else? When we start to win, we become more risk averse. And as we start to lose, we become bigger risk takers. This uh, Heiken Ashi tool lets your um, profits run more um, easily so we get a better risk return on our trades so quite a really powerful tool if you'd like to use it so here's our maths like I said in summary it's literally two bars open high low close smoothed out but if you want to set it up there it is go through it after this session most charting packages have high uh, as a default so you don't have to do that calculation you should just be able to click a button and set it up on your charts Okay, let's have a look at an example. Here we've got Under Armour, the US sports apparel company. Our typical candlestick chart. We can see lots of red and green days. We can see a downtrend, but we can see gaps. Um, we might be a bit confused in the direction. We're still saying it's down, but is that bottoming? We're not sure. It's Okay, very powerful as it is, but we can make that better, especially like I said, if you twitch your fingers on when to get out or um, determining the trend. And I've made it more obvious with this example with the, the obvious downtrend, but let's now switch to the Heiken Ashi chart. And we can now start to see reds and greens in bigger batches. And hopefully you can, when comparing to the candlestick chart, see things a lot more clearly, like there's a nice little downtrend, an uptrend. Whereas previously, looking at the um, chart, we had a mixture of red and green days. We would stay in these little ones longer and maybe make more profit out of them because we're not so jumpy around uh, the price action. So really useful tool in your trading. Works in all time frames as well. It doesn't have to be daily charts, could be weekly, could be down the other way, four hours, one hour, 15 minutes, less than that if you want to. It works in all time frames. As I mentioned, a few patterns that are important to know. Really, in summary, all you're gonna to need to know in um, Heiken Ashi world is our two friends, the doji and the spinning tops. And these are often, when you see them in the Heiken Ashi chart, 
very good for finding reversal points. Those are some other important things to know about hiking ashi. You can put on all the usual patterns of triangles, heads and shoulders, all, you know, all those things we looked at a few weeks back. Notice that there aren't gaps on these charts because the calculation fills those gaps. With big down bars with little or no upper shadows signify strong selling pressure. What do I mean by that? Let's go back here. Um, as the trend strengthens to the downside, you'll notice no wicks above the candle and the same to the upside as it goes up. But as the trend weakens, you'll start to see wicks appearing um, on the opposite side. Have a look at an example, FTSE 100 on the 60 minute chart. Um, you can see when a, going back to that previous example, when a strong trend is underway, no underlying wicks. And our down example, no underlying so no above wicks on the downside. And can we see our candles? We've got some doges in there, combination. The more you get together, better sign it is a reversal. And quite clearly down here at the bottom, we've got a good combination where the price changed and reversed back. So we can put these adapted price chart together with a lot of other indicators to create very effective trading strategy. And we can put trade off the price. I've listed out a few ways that you could do that, bounce, continuation, reversal, pause, pullback, breakout, whatever suits. We've got a euro dollar chart here of 15 minutes and I've just overlaid, and again, go back and review this, different ways, concepts of applying hiking ashi and I've added on a stochastic as well to help me with my timing. Um, like I say, very effective for your trading. That's hiking ashi. Now I'm gonna have a look at Renko, Kagi and Line Break and to put this into our head so we get the um, idea of what these are used for. I sort of summarize them here as Renko, I look for breakouts, trend following reversals. Line break, brilliant for reversals. Possibly trend trading if you like to. Kagi, like Renko, good for breakouts, trend following and reversals. So I put together a really simple example so you can see what they all look like against each other. For the same imaginary stock, XYZ PLC, I've created here hypothetical price and change direction. So our line break on that piece of data there would look something like that. Our Kagi chart would look like that. And our Renko chart would look like that. All the same uh, series of data, but all giving us something different um, to trade with. And we're gonna have a look now into each one of these to see what they actually mean. So at first glance, look quite strange compared to our traditional um, charts, but I like them because they sort of give me a more clean uh, visualization of what's going on. So let's start with Renko charts. What are they? They were created in Japan um, a very long time ago and really only just filtering into the West in the last few decades. And they're thought to be named after the word Renga, which means brick. And as we saw from our example here, we've got as it looks like a series of bricks either up or down that represent a fixed price move and they move up or down in the 45 degree line and one brick per vertical column and this creates i think some very clean very easily analytical um, trading applications and one really really important concept to get into your heads here is a takeaway time we're focusing on price movement that's why i like them even more we're not worried really about the time, it's how um, these prices are moving. Here's an example on cocoa. I hope that you can start to see that trends and direction, movement, support, resistance is a lot more easy to ascertain. In theory, they're sort of very similar to point and figure charts and in the way that we have to create a particular block size. A lot of charting packages will help set you up those sort of sizes on like a percentage or an average true range. Or you might say, for example, if you're trading WTI crude oil, you might say one block equals $1. And then when it moves through $1, you'll get another block up into $1 and so on and so on. It'll build up a pattern for you. But if it trades within that $1, you won't get a, a new block. Anything else we need to know there? So simple buys and sells when it goes from red to black, buy from black to red, sell. That's a bit too over simple. And I think I wouldn't follow that idea. I add on other indicators and tools to make those decisions. But in theory, that's the way you can interpret this information.
again, we're going to look at, there's a typical candlestick chart of crude oil. And on the other side, we've got the same thing applied to Renko charts. And I think the two, you know, that to me is a lot messier than that simple view of the same thing. And I'll make easier decisions off the Renko charts. Creating the brick size, massively important. I do it around volatility. I like to apply the volatility of the instrument to my block size. I'll come up with a different methodology there. That could be something like average true range. I use historical volatility. Some people use percentage of the price. Some just take a fixed value. Here's an example of two methods, still on crude oil. We've got one here with a fixed $2 brick size and one with an average true range divided by four approach. And you can see same instrument, same period, but you come out with slightly different views of your trading. There's no right method. I mean, if it works for you, it works for you. But I like to factor in volatility to my instrument so I don't get whipped out of trades. Using it for trading, very good for support and resistance levels, trend reversals, um, breaks in trends. Um, and we got on here on our chart, you can see where, for example, three lows can mark a sub area of support, a key number to help you set stops, for example. So there's a multi-purpose tool to use. And I suppose, like I said here, with the advancement of charting software you can add other indicators on top of this i um, use now western indicators on top of the japanese approach to create an even stronger uh, strategy of trading here we've got for example uh, renko with bollinger bands and fibonacci and like i said you can still draw patterns and trends on top of your renko chart they're very um, useful multi-purpose trading tool like i said there stops Yes, we can use stop to go back. We look for support and resistance levels. We could have a stop above there if we were short or maybe below here if we were long. So summarize basic rules, use for levels of support and resistance, use indicators on top like moving averages and bands. We could trail our stops so we know that I'm following moving average maybe in the brick, behind the bricks. Like I said, I use historical volatility to cal calculate my brick size. So let's move on to CAGI, a similar concept to Renko, but presented in a slightly different way, been around since the 1870s. It's all about yin and yang, and again, um, takes out a lot of the noise of trading. And similar, again, concept to the Western point and figure type chart. Again, important to know, it takes out price from the equation. We have to set our parameters for our lines, but this is uh, the S&P 500, black being bullish, red being bearish. When it goes from red to black, we buy and black to red we sell, that's the simple approach. Again, I wouldn't follow that as a, a rule, but that's the theory. And I use other stuff on top to give that confirmation. Here, the S&P 500 is a CAGI chart. And over here, as a typical bar chart, I hope you can see that, again, it's just making it a lot clearer what's going on in the S&P than for all the different colored bars. We've just got a clear up, down, and uh, trend sort of finding tool. So summarize the basics here. It's a pure price movement study. Um, we take out time. The two lines known as yin and yang. The lines change when you, after you've inputted a fixed set amount. Um, again, like the Renko concept, we can use volatility, fixed amount, however you want to set it up. In my examples here, we're going to use black to red as sell and red to black as buy. Black thicker lines indicate more bullish periods, that's called the yang line, and the red thin lines signify bearish periods, the yin line. Here's our construction, um, if you wanted to go and find them on your charts and get going on CAGI, give them a go. Like I said, fixed number of points, percentage move, average true range, three ways of starting to use CAGI, set the lines. Benefits, um, I think again it's just an easy, more transparent way of analyzing the market. Here it is with the Nikkei 225 over a longer period of maybe a year. Just easier to see the ups and downs, when to get in and out. Again, similar to the concept of Renko, you can draw your trend lines on. Um, they actually have names, these different types of patterns like falling waists and rising shoulders. We can do breakouts, reversals, support resistance. It's all in there, all for you to see. So if you're going to use Kagi, I, I think it becomes a much better tool if you add in 
indicators on top of just the pure price analysis. Have a look at RSI, MACD, stochastics, moving averages, all to determine support, resistance, entry and exit points. And again, like it says there, stops, fabulously using stops. There's some basic rules that I've put there. And finally, let's have a look at an example of a combination of the Kagi chart with the MACD oscillator and some trend lines drawn on. We could maybe say, for example, here we've got a buy signal on the MACD and it comes in line with a breakout and it's bounced off support. This is how you can start to put strategies together. So finally, line break. This tool is, I think, really powerful for spotting reversals. This one, even if you didn't want to use it on its own, you could combine it with ordinary charts, line charts, your candlestick charts, your bar charts, and use it as a tool for spotting um, reversals or giving you more confidence that reversals are going to happen. Again, it works in all time frames most popular one you might hear of in your chart package and normally the one that defaults is the three line break. On this side we've got GBP USD as a bar chart, sorry a candlestick chart and then on the other side you've got the same view as a line chart. What are we looking at? It's a series of you know vertical white black lines in my world I use you can see green and reds. New lines are created on basis of the closing price and if the previous high is exceeded a new bullish line is added if the low is exceeded then a bearish line is added price stays within the range no new line is drawn again we take away price from the equation that one of the beauties of line break charts is that we don't need to put any inputs in like we did with setting the brick size in Renko or the line size in Kagi it does it itself the only thing we can change here is the number of breaks um, from the three that may be set up and I'll show you in a second what that exactly means. Here is gold on a four hour chart set up with three line breaks. How does the idea work? So if we take any tip, we would start here. What we're looking for is a reversal and how it works is if we've got, because it's called three line break, we look at the three previous up bars, one, two, three, and as it breaks the bottom of that first one, that is when we would then go short and vice versa for the long trade, we would go one, two, three down our bars. And then when it breaks up that third one, the first of the third three, then we go long. And this is just a simple roadmap then of buying and selling. It doesn't always work. As it said, there will be some false breakouts, but that's why I advise putting indicators on top of that, just to confirm whether these are actual reversal points or not, just to strengthen your trade idea. Like I said there, use the line breaks great for trading by itself or adding in conjunction with other charts and ideas. Very good for spotting reversals, very good for spotting support and resistance and patterns and trends. And if we go to this example on Coco, we've got a three line break here. I've put in stochastics where I would look where we're, we've gone into an oversold situation here. We get a cross, it pops out through the 20 line actually that marries up nicely to a reversal in the price we'd be buying here. Where do you put your stop, for example? Because we're confident in our chart working, we would go below these reversal points. So we can actually have quite aggressive stops while trying to take advantage of these trends. So to summarize the rules, um, very good for finding support and resistance. Use the turning points of the line break for more an aggressive approach. Put indicators on top, for example, moving averages, bands, historical volatility, average true range, and that should start, start to get you going in the world of line break. We can trail our stops as well. Um, maybe if, if we go back a number of uh, bars behind, so you could say like three bars behind and just follow it down and get taken out. Or you could maybe add on a band or um, something, like, you know, something like the Bollinger Bands to give you a point of whether it's at the top or bottom of a range to get in and out of. So many things you can do with line break. Some loose rules around, for example, another way of doing it, if there's eight to 10 lines in one direction, that can be an acceptable length of a trend and time maybe to get out. Never really used that, but it's one of the rules sitting in the background there, you could try. We've now covered off a real brief introduction to Japanese charts. It's again, a big um, topic to get involved with. It's my favorite area of technical analysis, one I use quite successfully um, and have used successfully over many years. 
I marry it into Western um, indicators and tools to add strength to my trading and decision making and strategy design. And I find it works really nicely. They look strange to start with. Um, when I first looked at them, I wasn't sure about them, but they actually suit my trading style personality more than some of those like alternative concepts that we saw uh, last week. So don't rule them out, have a look. They should be available on your chart. So on most charting packages, give them a go and see whether they suit you. Next week, we're gonna try and put things all together. What we've learned over the previous episodes, we're gonna look at strategy design and implementation, risk and trade management, and improving your results, which will take us to the end of our 10 series um, look at technical analysis. So if you've got any more questions on Japanese charts, need to know more, then please get in touch with me at the details there. Other than that, thank you for joining me today and I look forward to you joining me in the next episode, part eight, putting it all together, strategy, design and implementation. Thank you.